Welcome to Traders Corner. As always, I'm joined by Garth McKenzie, founder and editor of Traders Corner. Garth, welcome. Hi, Julia. Garth, it's another good week for the portfolio. Um, and we'll start off with that long position that you took on the top 40, which you have now closed out. Yes. And that's earned the portfolio some cash. But talk us through what's happened. Uh, yeah, that's right. It certainly has earned us some cash. And it's great to be on, on set uh, reporting some good news because it has been a tough start to the year for us. But let's have a look at that trade. Um, what I've got on the screen at the moment is a chart of the Aussie 40 future one hour chart. So this is the June uh, Aussie 40 future that we're talking about here. And it's a one hour chart. So every candlestick pattern that you see on this chart here represents one hour's worth of trade on the market. So this graph goes all the way back to around about the, the 20th of March or okay. there and thereabouts. So we're talking about close to a month worth of trade that you see on this graph over here. Now, what I'd identified previously was that the market was in this downtrend. That was throughout sort of late March and into early April. We had that pullback in the market, which was about a uh, about a 3,000 point pullback. It got into relatively oversold territory and it started to form this base down here between 45,400 and up to 46,000. Now, when the market broke out through that 46,000 level, through that uh, lateral overhead resistance level there, I took that as a cue to then go long. Uh, and, and keep in mind also this was partially because we've got an, an options, we short a call option which, which loses me money the more the market goes up. So yeah. it was kind of a hedge, but it was also a long trade in its own right so that we could make a bit of money off this trade on its, on its own right as well. So I went long of one future of the June 16 Aussie top 40 contract, and uh, I went long at 46,008 with a stop loss of 45,550. Now, as you can see, it's worked out nicely that we had a nice big gap up on the day after we initiated that trade, and it's continued up uh, for, for a week or so since then. But um, what's happened in the last couple of days is that the market uh, saw quite a sharp move up, but it's now actually broken this uptrend that uh, has been in place for the last week or, or there and thereabouts. So I took that break of uptrend as an opportunity to sell, and I sold out at 47,388. So that allowed us to then bank a profit of 13,770 Rand uh, off this top 40 future, which is great. And you can see the market has come back a little bit since then. So, so far, it looks as if selling out was the right thing to do. Yeah. I mean, and, and also having pulled back again, it means that your option structure um, is not costing you money because yeah. this is, as you say, the hedge position. So yeah. is it quite feasible that you'll actually maybe continue trading around this option structure that, that you may well have to do so? I might well have to because the thing is we're short of a call option with a strike of 47,000. And you can see right now the, where, the, where all this noise is at the moment on the right side of that chart, that's around 47,000. So yeah. you know, above 47,000, that option starts losing us money. Below 47,000, we're fine. So theoretically, if the market is above 47,000, I actually want to be long of an Aussie 40 future. Okay. But it's very easy, and it's much easier said than done. Uh, trading the hedges is, is, is not always that simple. But what this has allowed me is uh, it's effectively given us 13,700 Rand worth of profit, which is now in the bank. And that kind of does give us a little bit of a comfort blanket in the sense that if our, if our option does start to lose us money, well, at least it's going to be losing profits now instead of yeah. losing capital. At least you won't be in the fetal position mm. sobbing quietly to yourself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You'll have a blanket to hold on to. <laughs> Garth, okay, um, sticking with the top 40, I know you've got a weekly chart that you'd like us yeah. to have a look at. What's the significance of that? Yeah, we just look at the bigger picture each week, and uh, we look at the top 40 and the S&P 500, and we're doing that again here. Now, this is the top 40 weekly chart. So meaning that every candlestick pattern that you see on this graph is one week worth of trade. And really, you can see this goes back to mid-2014 here. Um, and the market's been oscillating up and down between about 41,500 and up to 49,000 on the top 40. Yeah. The reason I find this interesting is because last week we actually saw the market staging a reversal. That candle that I've highlighted there with the arrow, that is a reversal candle where the market goes up and then it comes it actually closes negative for the week. And that was the first reversal candle that we've seen uh, on, on the top 40 for a little while. So it, it's just interesting to note that that has happened at a lower, at a lower high than what mm. we've seen previously. So really and truly, I mean, not to try and draw too many conclusions from this, but it's, it is maybe a suggestion that the market is Becoming running out a little, of puff. Yeah, a little bit, yeah, running out of puff. That's a great way to, to, to term it. Um, and, and, and I think we're in for some choppy times here. And, and the reversal candle basically indicates that the, 
The sellers last week won the week. They beat the buyers mm -hmm. last week. What about on other international markets like the S&P 500? Well, he here's the S&P 500. Now, this is a daily chart, and we've looked at this each week. And again, nothing much has really changed here uh, over the last week or so. Um, we are running up into this zone of resistance here at about 2100 on the S&P 500. Uh, and what's still very notable is the negative divergence that is evident on this, on this RSI here. Um, that occurs where your oscillator, in this case the relative strength index, the RSI, makes lower highs whilst the price is making higher highs. So what it's telling you really is that the market's running out of momentum to the upside. And very often when you see this negative divergence like we're seeing here, it does preempt a pullback or a change in the short-term trend. What's also quite interesting to note is that last week over, what was it, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I think it was, um, the S&P 500 registered what we term an evening star reversal. And that those, those three candles right up at the top there that I'm highlighting with my mouse cursor mm. now, um, it's an up day followed by what we term a doji where the market opens and closes at the same price, and then there's a negative day after that. It's, it's sort of an indication of a short-term top, potentially. Um, so if we take that and take it into the context of the resistance that we're talking about there, take it into the context of the negative divergence, you know, to all, of, all of that to me just suggests caution. And, I mean, those, um, those uh, I guess, it's the averages, the 50-day or the 200-day moving average, they're crossing, aren't they? And, mm. you know, people, isn't that a golden cross? Um, yes. But, but actually, <laughs> how relevant is that? Or it's is not. That, it's, is well, it in my experience, the golden cross and the death cross are probably one of the, I don't know why they get so much airtime air in technical analysis circles because they're highly unreliable in my experience. And you can see there was actually a golden cross over there back in December last year just before the market absolutely plummeted. And, um, and now we've got another golden cross. A golden cross occurs where your 50-day moving average crosses up above your 200-day moving average. So that's exactly what's just happening over there on the S&P 500 now. And um, conventional thinking is that uh, that cross tells you that the market's now starting a new uptrend, and of course the opposite is if the market's starting a new downtrend. Mm. But as I say, in my experience as a trader, I've found it to be utterly useless as a, as a guide. So don't pay any attention to it. <laughs> okay, we won't. <laughs> Garthen, moving on to this week's trade, um, and, and setting us up to that is a look at the, the, the retail index. Yeah, so this is a, a weekly chart now of the of the SA, um, the general retail index on the JSE. So it goes all the way back to the beginning of the bull market in 2009. So it's a long-term chart. Um, and the reason I start by looking at this long-term picture and then zooming in on the shorter-term pictures, just to look at this long-term trend that started in 2009. And notice how that joined the lows of all the various pullbacks along the way quite nicely. But this retail index has broken below that uptrend now. Um, which is a break of the primary bull trend since 2009. It's rallied recently, but it looks to me almost like it's doing a bit of a retest of the underside of that previous upward trend. Now, I want to zoom in on that boxed area that I've highlighted there, uh, just to look at it more carefully and okay. more closely. So there you can see this basically represents the last year and a half worth of trade. This is, a, again, it's a weekly chart of the retail index. And what's notable here is this area of what was lateral support over there throughout 2015, and it broke down in late 2015. Now you'll see the market's been battling to get up above that resistance point now. And last week, we had a, a reversal on the weekly candle, indicating so that you can, that's almost like we term that a shooting star. But that's quite a, a positive long, development, isn't it? No, it's not. In this case, it's a, that is a, a negative development because oh. it's telling you that there's, there's selling pressure up at the higher levels. When you see a candle that's got okay. a long tail to the upside like that, what it's telling you is that the market tried to get up, but it got sold down into the end of the week. And we we, that is a type of reversal candle. So the fact that it's happening at the underneath of this 50-week moving average here in red, and also the fact that it's happening at this lateral resistance zone is quite meaningful. Also what's very meaningful here is this is what we call negative reverse divergence on the stochastic oscillator. So although our price has made a lower high, our oscillator has made a higher high. It's more overbought now than what it was in the previous rally. Mm. Um, and that's very rare to see on a weekly chart like we're seeing here. And it's usually an indication of a move in the direction of the trend, which in this case actually is down, because you can see we've been trending gradually down over the last year or so. Um, so that is a negative sign uh, okay. over there. So now I know that you, you like to trade 
um, well, strong stocks and strong sectors, and I guess weak stocks and weak sectors. Yeah. So um, this, this week, um, traders are short in true worth. Yeah. Yeah, and you're right, and I, I guess you could say that we're kind of going against some of our basic principles here because this is a relatively strong stock, and it has broken out, and we're going short of it. Um, so you might sort of think that's, that's a bit strange, but look, hear me out, and I'll explain why. Okay. Um, this is the chart of, of True Worths over here, now it's a daily chart going back to November of last year. Um, it's broken out through 100 Rand over here. That's an overhead resistance area, and you can see we've seen this powerful move up over the last couple of weeks. Um, there was a very clear reversal pattern that occurred last week on Thursday. And uh, you can see it there circled on this chart. And my thinking here is that we're likely to now see a pullback towards 100 Rand to actually go and test that breakout level. Also, what was interesting, I just saw a, a note last week um, on the Sense to say that Trueworths or the Aberdeen Asset Management, big emerging market asset manager, um, now own just over 20% of Trueworths. And that note came out, and it made me think that this buying that we've seen over here, that, that what looks very squeezy, that move throughout the middle of April, um, it looks like a, quite a short squeeze type of move, but also the fact that Aberdeen have been buying, I, I, look, I don't, it, it's just interesting to me, and, it's, and the fact that that announcement came out right when we, the, the stock was running out of momentum suggested to me that we're probably going to see whatever buying was driving that price up is probably now off, the bet buy order's probably been finished, and I think that's likely to see the share price retrace back down towards 100 Rand. Because yeah. just, just a point on Aberdeen, it is the biggest shareholder in True yeah. And I've also been noticing a lot of sense statements, um, and it's, it's, it's moving up and below that 20% level. And I think Aberdeen tends to lend out script. Yeah. And I think that's maybe what, what's happened there. A lot of asset managers do run a script lending book because they're long-term holders of, of these shares. So they'll then lend out script to short sellers. Because if you sell short a company, you need to actually borrow the shares from yeah. somewhere. And, and Aberdeen would be a script lender in this case. But it still talks to the fact that that move higher then was probably a short squeeze. Mm. And now that the short's been squeezed out, we've seen the reverse, and it looks as if the price is likely to come back down. So it's on that basis that I think there's a short on the table here, and we're looking to try and capitalize on that move downwards. Okay. Do you want to talk us through that trade in maybe yeah, greater detail? Sure. Well, I've gone short at 111 Rand 30. Let's have a look at the mechanics. Um, the, my stop loss is 113 Rand. Uh, that therefore means that my risk per share is 1 Rand 70 per share. I'm risking only 1% of our capital here. And that is partially also because we, we are fighting momentum in a yeah. sense here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so 1% of our account is 2,650 Rand that I'm willing to lose if this trade goes wrong. So I take that 2,650, I divide it by 1 Rand 70, gives me 1,558 shares. So rounding it down, I've done 1,500 CFDs short here. My target is 100 Rand per share, and therefore my risk to reward ratio is 1 to 6.6. So it's, quite, it's a nice risk to reward ratio, and the main reason for that is because the stop loss is relatively tight. So if we do get the pullback to 100 Rand that I'm looking for here, we'll actually do quite nicely out of this trade. Mm. Okay, well, let's, um, let's hope it does. Mm. Um, Garth, so taking all that into account, because it's been then a fairly busy couple of weeks for the portfolio, how do yeah. things stand? Yeah, we're looking good. So we're up 8% for the year to date now, um, which is great. I'm, I'm really pleased to see we're on the right side of the, the ledger in terms of how this portfolio is looking now. Um, the true worth short position that we've just entered this week is in the money now. We're up about 4,770 Rand on that trade at the okay. moment. And then obviously we banked a profit on that Aussie future, uh, 13,700 Rand. So we're looking good. We're up 20,000 Rand uh, on our starting capital from the beginning of the year. So, so far, so good. Yeah. Okay. And, and hopefully that blanket um, is not needed to be used if the market does <laughs> run about 47,000. Yeah. Um, Garth, and, and then just to end off with your course dates. Yeah, so I'm going to be busy in the beginning of May now. In Johannesburg on the 5th and the 7th of May, I'm running courses. And then in Cape Town, I'll be down there on the 13th and 14th of May. Um, and my colleague Andrew Todd also runs a top 40 trading course on the 7th of May in Cape Town. So there you can see the dates and the different courses that we're running. Anybody that would like to attend any of these courses, please email me, goth at traderscorner.co.za, and I'll send you all the information. Okay, great, Goth. We'll leave it there, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, as always, for joining us. Goth McKenzie is founder and editor of Traders Corner.